the generation of 3D models with AI holds great potential for form finding and designing 3D assets. Being able to quickly sketch an idea and get a 3D representation within an environment can be very useful workload, especially as this technology becomes more accurate. For now, the generated 3D models are quite low quality and some are quite similar quality to Google 3D tiles. But seeing how these can be generated within minutes from sketches using open source software, this is definitely a workload keeping an eye on. It is also worth mentioning there are many other AI 3D models out there with promising progress, such as CAD 3D for multi-view diffusion models or OpenAI's Shape E for simpler 3D object generation. But for this video, I'll go through a great comfy UI workflow. For this tutorial, I'll be using Tripo SR by Stability AI for fast 3D object reconstruction from a single image. You can read a technical explanation on the GitHub and academic paper. Only three nodes are actually needed for this workload and has similar results to much more complicated workflows or even paid services. Before we jump into Comfy UI, we will download the Tripo SR model checkpoint, rename it to avoid any confusion, and paste it into your checkpoints folder in Comfy UI. For the custom nodes, you can either git clone it into your repository as per the instructions on the GitHub page, or an easier way is to go into your Comfy UI manager, custom nodes, and install it from here. And then you just need to restart. I'll be using a sketch to image to 3D workflow. However, I covered the sketch to image part in a previous video, so you can check that out in order to get to this point. And it is using a standard SD 1.5 control net with a scribble model. Here I've loaded in a very basic tower sketch and we'll add a preview image here so our starting point can be viewed. And then I will just generate. Now we have an interesting modern tower design to make into 3D. I will drop in our three main custom nodes from Tripo SR from the search bar. So first the model loader, then the sampler, and then finally the viewer. There's a lot of power in just these three simple nodes. We will need to change the model in the loader to the one that we downloaded for the Tripo SR checkpoint. We move these over and we can connect the image from the decoder straight into our sampler. You see that there's a connector for a reference mask. If the image has no background, you can leave this blank. However, since we have a Skynet image, it can confuse the 3D generation as we want an object and not a whole scene. We could try to it out with some text. However, it is not always successful and a much easier method is just to use a background remover node. We can install this OSA from the manager under custom nodes and it is called RemBG. So search for this and install the background remover. There are two nodes needed for this to work. First is the RemBG session. And the second is the actual image remove background node. I will use the session for CUDA rather than CPU and just connect this to the background remover and then connect the base image and the generated mask to the sampler. So that we can preview the mask, I'll add a mask image node and then the preview image. Finally, I'll connect the model loader to the sampler and increase the sample settings to 512 as the 256 is very low res. And then we can connect the generated mesh to the viewer. And that is the complete workflow that is needed to generate 3D. This takes about a minute or so on my machine to run, which I have a 12 gigabyte VRAM. And you do get a mesh here at the end that does resemble the image. You see the curving steel structure, the double curves, and the window strips. If you spin it around, you see it covers all the sides in a similar style although you can see there is a bit of a blur at this end. 
So of course, at 512 resolution, this cannot be used for CGI's or architectural analysis at this point. But it does have promise for the future with higher resolutions and better detail, especially if we can get a 3D upscaling workflow. With this all set up, it is also very easy to scribble another sketch and replace the first image and generate some more. So here I will try a more organic sketch. And you can see it picks up all the curves and windows, although maybe this is a bit too abstract for an office building. I'll try another sketch with some simple volumes and generate again. Actually, the sketch to render here has generated an interesting addition with a form wrapping the volumes. And then the 3D has also been extruded into a volume, which I didn't expect. But I think it's quite a creative output for the AI. If you don't want to start from sketch, and already have an image or render from another app, such as Midjourney here, you might have better and more creative details. So what you can do is just remove the first half of the workflow and use the image loader, drop in the render into this, and then connect the image to the Tripo SR sampler and the background remover. When we run this, the mesh actually picks out all the edges from the organic shape and window recesses, which I think is quite impressive for such a quick and low-res model. These meshes all are saved out as OBJs, so they can be dragged and dropped into your favorite 3D software. Here in Rhino 3D, I've placed them in 3D Google Maps scene, which roughly matches the resolution, so they blend in quite well, actually. And you can see the potential for quick contextual massing studies. Interesting ideas for apps could include using this technology to generate 3D models from sketches directly into 3D Google Maps, although scaling is difficult to control in the generation. Or eventually, when the models become more accurate, they could be used to develop other urban analysis, such as CFD, sunlight, structural and area approximations or massing forms. If I take a closer look at the mesh in 3ds Max, you can see that it is a very bumpy and uneven mesh, but it does pick up all those windows from the renders. And with that said, there are thousands of inefficient meshes, so not really usable at this point, even if you re topologized it. There are other interesting 2D to 3D workflows in Comp UI, such as the CRM method shown here in the GitHub. It is a far more complex workflow but breaks down the steps further so you can actually see the six orthographic views generated for the textured mesh. This does allow greater control and slightly better results, so it's also worth taking a look at. With this said, there's plenty of development in the 2D to 3D AI world happening. I'll be posting more videos as this process evolves, so be sure to take a look.